were you talking? Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. Jen, as soon as you left, it like cut out. So I didn't yeah. know if you were. The meeting ended. The meeting, meeting ended, ended and then everybody yeah. was still here miraculously. I didn't realize I was hosting anything. So you I'm going to been go ahead and, you know, she might have made it so that, uh, like, I don't have any co-host uh, mm. abilities. Okay. Mm. So, um. All right. Yeah, it doesn't look like you do, but. Can you transfer? Yeah, I don't. You are the host. You must yeah. have. I don't know. I swear I didn't hit me. Okay, I'm going to wait again. So All right. if I close and something happens, Haley, just email me right back again. Okay. okay? So you know what to do. All right. See ya. All right. No, it worked. No time. issues this time. That's good. Okay, we're all still here? Yep. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute my microphone. Okay, it's my turn for, I guess, tech difficulties today. Something's in the water. Thanks for saving us. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll say, that was amazing. Um, I, I was freaking out. <laughs> I was quick to type that email. Um, so yeah, so, but anyway, on a lighter note, the Senior Center is back open. I've been really enjoying connecting. Some folks are taking the time to come walk over, spend the afternoon hanging out. Um, I've been fixing a cup of tea just about every day now for one senior in particular who I really have enjoyed chatting with. Um, and that's so refreshing for me to, to be able to see. And uh, so right now we're working on our new newsletter uh, distribution and I hinted at more programs. I'll talk a little bit about those. So, so you should all hopefully know we've got the open house on Wednesday, the 11th of May. Um, big event, 15 vendors. Uh, we're working with Crest. They're actually going to be the ones who are helping us pay for the catering for that event. Um, live music. We'll have at least three different um, baskets to raffle off for seniors in attendance. Uh, so it should be a really fun day. And um, starting tomorrow, we'll all start um, getting the media involved. Um, I got the number for Cy Becker. We'll reach out to him, the Gazette, the Indy, just about anyone I can get my hands on um, to cover that event. Following that, um, we're going to be bringing back a number of programs. Legal Advice with Ed Smith will be offering that one. So on the second Tuesday of every month, we will once again offer a blood pressure clinic weekly at the Senior Center. Um, we have a number of things um, coming. We'll be offering the Senior ID card clinics through the PVTA. So that's if you need to renew your senior ID, you get your picture taken. You don't have to go to Holyoke. You can come right to the senior center. And then we'll offer a special second clinic for that, which will include a travel trainer. So if you're a new person, you've never used public transit before, you'll be able to get like a, you know, a little guide, a walkthrough of your first time. Um, some other new programs, we will be offering 30 minute Reiki sessions once a week, starting in May. Um, I'm working with, um, his name is Bob Nelson. He's a Reiki master. He's currently working in Northampton, but we've pulled him over to Amherst um, to do a clinic for us. Um, we will be offering a number of ways for seniors to get involved with their town council, with the town manager. We'll have office hours at the Bang Center. I already have districts two, three, and four lined up, but more will follow. Um, Medicare programs, aging in place. I'll take a tour of Fenway Park. Um, and then I'm also very excited. We're going to have a whole week of self-care events. So we will offer um, like a manicure clinic, chair massage, Reiki, ice cream social, uh, mindfulness workshop. So, and that's not even the full list of what we're doing, but it's a lot. So I don't want to take up too much time, but um, I'm really excited that people will have a nice smattering of different types of topics that hopefully will pique their interest. Um, and then of course, the, the downside to that is as we're adding new programs, we're quickly running out of space, you know, it becomes a problem, right? If we have two events going on in one day, well, then that's a lot less space um, that we have to work with. So it's becoming a little tricky to navigate and to find the right layout for each room. Um, but we will make do with what we can. Does anyone have any questions on the programs that we have coming up? I have a question um, about the open house. Mm -hmm. You had requested that members of the council be present at the open house. And I wanna make sure that everybody knows about it and will try to be present. Okay. Um, will there be a table for the council or do you have a special um, thing in mind for mm -hmm. members of the council? 
I was hoping that the council, depending on how many of you are in attendance, I would love to have you stationed at the greeter desk. You can be kind of like the first stop for people coming in the door, but then also walking around, you know, asking people if they know about senior programs, introducing yourselves. You know, I really want us to be kind of very vocal in how we approach people and reminding them to please come check us out and see what we have to offer. Um, you know, by that point, we'll have gotten, we'll have closed the surveys for the Age and Dementia Friendly Project, so we can let people know that we'll be working on, you know, getting their responses together, combing through the data, and trying to come up with an action plan. Uh, and we can also promote the listening sessions that will be happening later on in May. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Can you give me the date again? Uh, it's Wednesday, May 11th, from 1 to 3 p.m., but if you can come sooner than 1 to help set up, that would be very much appreciated. Any other questions? Okay, do you have anything more to say? Age dementia friend. Yes. Um, last week we had over 700 responses, which is the best out of any town that they have worked with. So I'm quite pleased with that, and I am sure that by the 30th of April we will have more responses. Hopefully, 800 or more. Mm -hmm. um, the outreach efforts continue. I will be tabling some events at the Amherst Farmers Market to promote um, you know, the, the project that we're doing and then also the listening sessions. Um, so if you don't know, the first session will be May 20, the fourth Monday, I think it's the 24th, and that topic will be housing. And then we'll move into social participation in June, transportation in July, and public safety in August. So we have a really nice array of topics to, um, to cover with folks and we wanna hear their feedback. I was able to get some of the early responses from PVPC and I was so impressed with the thoroughness and the detail that people are talking about the, their needs in Amherst. A lot of folks are being very explicit about lack of space at the senior center, not feeling like the town is taking the time to listen to what they need. And they're making that very clear. And I'm so encouraged by that and hope to, um, you know, we'll have an opportunity to share that once we're finished collecting the surveys. Mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Yeah, so I would say um, when, when the um, gathering sessions for the topics that come out, come out that I think that's really important mm -hmm. that we let our friends and colleagues know that their voices can be heard and what they say at these meetings is all going to be recorded. And it's very important if you have concerns about anything that you speak up and have Absolutely. speak up. So, okay, any other questions? others thank you i think norma must have gotten lost because she, she was going to give a, a report on the nutrition oh, uh, um, dorothy has a question so i'm gonna um, oh. allow her to talk oh, um, hi i'm getting ready to send out my pamogram because we're having a district meeting um, on the 24th and uh, earl will be our speaker but okay. in my pamogram i would like to include some senior news Mm -hmm. um, and um, I was taking notes, but I couldn't take it them fast enough. Oh, sure. Uh, if you could send me an email with yes. the dates. Um, mm -hmm. That way, get disseminated to at least a lot of people in District Three. Okay. Yes. Which Jennifer Taub and I share. So that would be really helpful if you could do it. And anything else you want to throw in there, because um, we really, I, you know, you've been talking to me, and I certainly understand that um, you've got to get more space. And I guess the first thing to think about at this point is are there other buildings or rooms in mm -hmm. the area that can be made available to the senior center? Um, but, you know, there's, we, there's so many things we're doing at once. It's kind of like chaos from our end. Um, mm -hmm. Just, you know, keep, keep the pressure up, okay? That's really important that you keep the pressure up because as you know, seniors are a very well-behaved group, okay? <laughs> And just have been too well behaved. Just so it's time to, as they say, act up, you know. Mm. And I think Great I Panthers all the way. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like you're getting ready to. So good, work. good to hear from you, Dorothy. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah. Right. I asked the uh, counselor something. A question back the other way. Sure. Um, 
District 4 has put out this age and dementia friendly uh, survey on their E um, lists. Um, I'm kind of doing the BIPOC outreach. I'm wondering if you could uh, put the survey, it's an online survey. I wonder if you could put the survey on this newsletter you're sending. I out. should, I should. And I have to tell you, I'm a little bit weak on links, but I will send I'll it to include me. it. I'll include yeah. that in the one, okay, one, of us, one of us will send it to your um, counselor email at uh, the town hall. Okay, great. Because you're right. Thank that you. does belong in this, this mailing that I'm going to do. And um, also, as I said, our district meeting is in the Jones Library of uh, Sunday the 24th, between 2 and 4.30, any flyers or any handouts that you have, uh, we're going to have a table with material. So that's a good place to disseminate stuff too. Um, and just let me know and I'll, I'll pick up or, or um, you know, get it from town hall or get it from you or whatever. We'll, we can arrange it. My front porch, just leave stuff in an envelope on my front porch and I can hand it out at the meeting. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Sure. That was very important. Okay, great. Thank you. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks. And Christine, you had a question. Was it of Dorothy? Yes. Um, not of Dorothy. Um, for Haley. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't a question, but it was, it's a question and it's also um, a little detail. Um, you had asked me to find someone willing to do the testimony. Mm -hmm. for our CDBG application. And we have a senior who lives in Amherst that is ready and willing and able. And she's a, a very articulate and she stays involved in um, community events. Oh, good. Yeah, are I would we, love to speak with yeah, actually, we, yeah. have we Have we submitted or are we still working on it? Uh, the RFP has not even been released yet, so we have ample time um, to get this together and to have this person um, provide some testimony, which I think will really bolster our application. Thank mm -hmm. you for bringing that up. That was one of the things on the agenda that I wanted to get information about. Is, in, is there anything further you need to add about the CDBG grant? Either. Um, I don't have any updates just because we don't yet know what the application is going to look like. So it's hard to say, you know, what kind of questions are they going to ask? How much can we apply for? What's the deadline? Um, but we certainly are going the transportation route. We want to see if, um, you know, a van, salary for the driver, um, all of those things. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. All right, I see Norma is back. And Norma, <laughs> are, are you... Um, can you hear me, Norma? Oh, she may not be back yet. Um, while she's getting adjusted, um, there's something that I would like to say. Um, Your name's not here. I know. Oh, we hear you, Norma. Uh, oh, you can hear me now? <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Said, but I, oh. <laughs> I can't find my video. OK, well, you want to go ahead and give your nutrition report. Okay, Bob's trying to get me back on because I I did part of it, but I <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the uh, report from the March meeting of the Nutrition Council, which meets every other month, and it was late this month because um, the cook finally had a chance to take some vacation, and so um, it didn't coincide with your meeting last month. Um, I, there wouldn't have been any report. Um, but Riley is the main chef and the meals are prepared at um, the Walter Salvo House in Northampton. And they do over, um, well, at least 600 meals um, a day. And it's been as much as 800 with the pandemic. And they're still doing the, um, meals on wheels, of course, but they also are continuing um, the grab and go, um, at least for the time being. And I think that's up to the Office of Elder Affairs and one other organization um, to um, decide when they're gonna do away, if they're gonna do away with that. 
Um, so one of the new things that um, they have instituted is um, called the Global Table. Can you all still hear me? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay, we're still working on the video. You gotta sign up, so just keep Okay, going. Just all right. Keep, just keep um, and so what they, people from Washington House in Westfield, which is probably the largest um, group of congregate meals, um, wanted to have some ethnic uh, dishes. And so they started out with, they had beef goulash and French milk meat pie. And, um, and then we'll give feedback and, and change it, of course, if people don't like it, but it's been very well accepted. And um, some new recent recipes in the last month are veggie chili, Caesar salad, roasted chickpeas, and turkey ter tetrazzini. And the chickpeas were a problem with Hatfield, I guess, because they were burnt. And they're supposed to be like chips. And I guess that's like me making kale chips. I burned them every time. Um, so he said he would be around the next time they do that and supervise and try to work that out. Um, and they've got some new kitchen updates with um, heaters and warmers to keep the food hot um, to get to, the, to these places. They're working at full tilt. No one got COVID during the whole epidemic, not that it's over, but um, knock on wood. And they um, they really work well as a group. They did hire two more drivers um, to do the home delivered meals, but they feel they're working at full capacity. And now that some of the uh, congregate sites are opening up, um, they, um, will, you know, be getting uh, more help from Kelly, who is the new nutritionist. And she's uh, young and enthusiastic, but has had plenty of experience, like 15 years experience in, um, in her nutrition work. And uh, let's see. Yeah, the meeting didn't last very long. It only lasted a little over half an hour. So you can imagine they talk fast and accomplish a lot. Um, so. Okay. Well, well thank Yeah. So I, I will end there. You don't need to know their pros and cons of each. <laughs> thank you. Okay. I wonder when we will open for congregate lunches. Yeah, I was going to ask that. Um, I, I don't know. Is that up to you, Haley, or? We could, yes. I mean, in essence, we could certainly move more quickly on that than we have. But I think for me, it comes down to an inadequate kitchen space. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that there is also something to consider in that the pivot to congregate dining may actually lose us diners. You know, in, in my experience, even before the pandemic, congregate dining was not uh, an immensely popular program. It really depended on the people in the area, the type of food, um, you know, even the timing of when you actually serve the meal. So I think that we can maintain a higher level of numbers by keeping the to-go format for now. Okay. And I do think that there's a certain amount of people who are just not comfortable eating inside. Okay, good. I'll bring that back to them. Okay. I can't get you. Okay. I can't get the video. If you uh, are ever uh, on the lookout for a chef, I have somebody I can I recommend highly. Oh, okay. um, Jamaican, mm. he's the, I, I'm not sure how arrangements are made through the center, but this is a, a Jamaican chef who mm. works part-time in, in New York City, but oh. he lives up here in this area and very much wants to come here full-time. Oh, nice. Okay, well, thank you. I will uh, pass that along too. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you very much, Norma. You're welcome. So um, I think we've lost a number of members here. Um, I don't know what happened to um, everyone. That I think some of it, I don't know, but mine clicked off again mm. a couple of times. And uh, I was faithful enough believing that I could reconnect that I actually did. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. that's great, Jacqueline. Yeah. That was really <laughs> excellent. Uh, well, Karen did say she had to leave. She had dinner yeah. plans. So she cool. was a planned exit. <laughs> Does anyone feel like we're playing Hollywood Squares? <laughs> <laughs> right. It certainly okay. looks that way. <laughs> well, we're just about through the agenda at any rate, but I did want to say a few things about what's been going on with the friends of the Amherst Senior Center. Um, I think you heard Haley say what a challenge it is to uh, arrange for all the activities in the limited rooms that we have now that we can't use the large pole room and we can't use room 101 for um, on Thursday afternoons and you know the dance classes and exercise classes are um, are are used to using that large activity room. So a few months ago at one of the friends meetings, and I'm a member of the friends as well, by the way, we discussed the problem of the senior center space. And then we also talked about the fact that we don't have much space and we don't have uh, much staff and we also don't have good budget. So some of us gathered information from seven other senior centers in the area, Belchertown, Greenfield, Hadley, Holyoke, Northampton, Bernardston, and South Hadley. And for each town, we determined the number of adults over the age 60, the sizes of space in square footage, the number of staff the senior center had, the year the senior center was occupied in that building, and the town budget for the senior center. And I'll tell you, the results were glaring. Can you share your screen, uh, Rosemary, to show how glaring that is? (laughs) Oh, actually, I don't know if that will work. Okay. I I sent the form, I can try sharing, okay? I sent the form to, um, Let me see if I can get that to work. Mm. If it's on the desktop, just the first yeah, thing. Go ahead. The first I, thing to do is, uh, if it's on your desktop, is to share screen, and then it, you'll have to go over and click on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, is it, what is the document called? There's I have two senior centers in the area, and I have. Letter to town. Oh, here we go. I got it. Okay. There it is. Uh, Can you see it? No. It'll take a second. Uh, I don't think it's going to work. Yeah, it should be. I'll pull it up. Which letter is it? I. It's the first one. It's the senior centers in the area. Okay, I got it. Here we go. Can you see? Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, I see that. So, as I said, it's glaring. Can you see that, Councillor Pam? Yes, I can. Excellent. Um, And this was shared with the committee TSO, Town Services Outreach. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was about to say, that we sent them a letter to all town council members. And our town, my town councillor in District 5 responded, and it was Shalini Balmill, and she came and had a tour of the senior center and saw our space limitations. She shared our concerns and um, she said that we could uh, be put on the agenda for discuss- presentation and discussion of the problem at the town services outreach committee meeting in May. Yes, uh, we're, we're working on that. Um, that was very good uh, that Shalini took the tour. Um, on, on the Town Services Committee, you also have Anika Lopes, and I believe she's very supportive at this time, and um, Anna Devlin Gautier, uh, as well as um, um, Andy Steinberg. So I think that we're really, I think that we will be open to what you have to say. Okay, thank you. It's a challenge I- at this time because they don't want to hear, okay? Yeah. I just wanted to make you all aware of this issue of what the friends have that the friends have brought forward. And I want to remind you that one of the purposes of the Council on Aging is to advocate for the needs of the aging population. 
And those needs and services and programs can't be met without adequate space, staff, or budgetary support. So with that in mind, I encourage you all to when, never hesitate to contact your town counselor about any concerns you may have regarding seniors. The town council is not able to remedy a problem if it does not know it, it if it doesn't exist mm. and they don't know about it. So please, if you don't know who your two count, town councilors are, and there are two councilors for each of five districts, and if you don't know who what district you live in, you can find out by calling the town clerk office at 259-3035. So please don't, you know, be afraid to speak up when something is a problem. Does anybody have questions about that? So you're saying that letter already went out? The letter went out. It oh. went out about uh, two weeks ago. And okay. they also got this um, form with the senior centers in the area. And... Uh, it also was published in the Amherst uh, Indy online paper or online news. Right. So. And Dennis, do you have anything to add to that? Dennis is actually on the Friends of the Senior Center Committee. He's secretary of that committee. So if you have anything you want to add. The only thing that I could probably add to it is that we also going back to, I think it was December, that uh, the member, all the members of the Friends and also some members of uh, the COA at that time, that we all got together and we met with uh, Paul Bockelman. Uh, very cordial meeting. Everything went was was very nice, uh, and we uh, we uh, let him know. Basically, that was the beginning of our of our approach to the entire situation. <clears throat> and uh, also, I uh, uh, with uh, with Rosemary's help, I also sent a letter uh, to uh, Mr. Bachelman, uh explaining some of our concerns and looking for some answers. And uh, fortunately or not, uh, there's been no response to the letter at all. Um, that's pretty much where we stand. However, uh, I, I think uh, very wisely, I think the, uh, the, the attention uh, for friends and also now it looks like also for COA members has turned over, over to the town council where it really belongs. And as Rosemary said, uh, it, unless uh, the town council members know of a problem, mm -hmm. then they can't possibly fix it. So, uh, so I, I think we're on the right track. We just have to, uh, as, as someone said, um, <clears throat> we just have to start acting up. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that's really important at this point. I, I, this is Jacqueline. I applaud you for taking that step, taking the initiative, taking that action um, to make Thank a difference you. and to uh, rattle some to to make a little bit of noise or as you put it to act up start start to act up nicely and then do it more intensely what needs to be done i applaud yeah. you I, th it's, I think it's important especially in the in the uh in the early stages to, to at least be polite but, uh, <laughs> but uh, i think it's terribly important to to also for us to be willing to get our point across yes i agree with you wholeheartedly so thank and you so much chad, chad you have a question hey, thank you um you know uh i hear the nice uh, be nice and all that it wasn't nice when they took those um spaces Space. away from us yeah um, we're not going to get anywhere right now. There's six. Um, I'm going to be derogatory here. There's six pigs at the trough already. Um, so we're, we're, you know, we're the last little curly tail out of there. Um, we are mm -hmm. discriminated against group. Um, I call them the big six. Uh, the, I agree. One of them is, is age, whether it be too young or too old. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, yes. That's why I yelled out gray panther. 
Uh, I don't know if you remember them, but uh, they were a little more uh, yes. Yes. In, in people's faces. So yep. my thought is, and I have a, a beautiful design, um, that we focus a little bit on what it could be. Um, mm. So at some point, mm. um, every time I try to get on the agenda, that never happens, but I, I don't know how. Um, I, I'd love to present you with, with some ideas I have that would fit in with, with our town. So keep going, brothers and sisters. We're going to get that. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I think that, um, let's see, you had something you wanted to say about PVTA. I think you said it, Haley. Jacqueline, did you have something about PVTA that you wanted to? Uh, I was told I use PVTA and the, the van, and it proves uh, to be very helpful sometimes. Sometimes it's more problematic than it is purposeful. Uh, but they have, um, I was told at, I guess a week or so ago that they've extended the hours so that people don't have to rush away from whatever it is they're doing four o'clock. I think that he said it's either five or six. I don't remember exactly, but that's, uh, that's shifting. And the, the, the next thing I really hope to shift for is the recognition that um, there are seniors who do uh, like having some level of mobility on weekends and there's no weekend transportation. And they do offer weekend and uh, transportation for people who are quote uh, disabled in some other way, but not for seniors who might be uh, able, uh, relatively speaking. So I think it's important. I think it's important to recognize, acknowledge, and to respond. That sounds terrific. It's uh, yeah. So these weekend services are available to some people, but yeah. not to able-bodied seniors. Yeah, ex exactly. That's what I was told. Yes, oh. they asked if you have a disability. I have not checked with them within the past week or so, uh, but I can do that since I am one of their uh, frequent customers. <laughs> Okay. Good. Get as much information as you can and keep us posted. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's great. Thanks, Jacqueline. Yeah. Um, I want to remind people that there is the Living with Hearing Loss program on Wednesday, April 20th. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Linda, I'm sorry. I didn't see your hand. You're, You're muted. muted. I'm mute. I just popped up. You didn't miss anything. I just went like that. Oh. <laughs> okay. I was wondering if I could take two minutes to kind of catch up a little bit on where Amherst Neighbors is. And yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm going to put a different frame on it. I thought it might be helpful also for people to know that Haley, Rosemary, and I had a, what I thought was a really lovely mm -hmm. conversation and meeting um, talking about um, who we are as a senior center in Amherst Neighbors and where are our commonalities and how do we distinguish uh, for our residents? And so mm -hmm. people know best how to use us as well as, uh, as we're building, both organizations are really building and developing um, for the future. How can we work together to support each other and be clear still with our folks um, about how to participate? So it was a great, I love the conversation, took copious mm -hmm. notes. And um, I'm actually going to draft an article for our newsletter. And then I said I'd pass it along also, you know, if we need to edit it, change it to put in the senior spirit. And if you have thoughts about where else we might um, uh, publish that, uh, you know, we can do a little bit more with it too. Um, but I thought it was a great start for our conversation. And I'm sure, you know, we're all, we're both evolving and changing. So, you know, we just need to keep the conversation going. So in that context, uh, you know, I see Amherst neighbors as um, the umbrella for me, for me is really what we call neighbor and neighbor connections. It's about a social connection. And in the spirit of supporting that, we have 
um, uh, assistance that we call services, although we're trying to look for a different word for that because it conveys a different meaning when you're saying services as opposed to neighbor to neighbor support. Um, but we do have a whole, you know, for now I'll just call it a, a services component and programs, you know, which are also in the spirit of bringing people together and hopefully starting uh, some connections that last beyond workshops and, and services. Mm -hmm. um, so with that, I mean, the services have been very heavily transportation. Um, and to answer that question, the weekend, we do not do week weekend transportation either. So that was a very interesting conversation that, you know, part you were uh, offering. Um, or uh, services, uh, you know, we do to doctor's appointments, to groceries, to friends, if you want to go to visit a friend. Um, uh, you know, anything that, uh, you know, really builds connection. Um, the other things we get called for in terms of the services component are like help with decluttering. We do, uh, we'll take people for grocery shopping or we will run errands for them. Uh, we'll help with, um, it's the classic changing light bulbs, you know, that kind of thing. But so it's small tasks that um, essentially don't require a contractor and you don't want to pay for if you don't have to. Right? Um, so on the program side, just to tell you what, what's going on in April, um, we did a program on the Freedom Riders with uh, Jean Denton Thompson and, um, oh God, Peter, I forgot Peter's name, but it's, it, you know, it was excellent, really nicely attended. We, everything is still on Zoom for us, except, I mean, the services yeah, yeah. we're doing in person, but our programs are still on Zoom. Um, we have one coming up on um, storytelling, you know, for grandparents to tell stories to their grandkids. Mm -hmm. um, in another category of programs, we have um, interest groups and Chad, can add to this if you like, but he's, he's, he was responsible for starting what we call a foodies group, interest group. We have book groups, um, you know, and a variety of things. Anything people generate themselves and say, I have an interest, you want a hiking group? We'll make that happen. If you want, uh, uh, you know, knitting, we'll make it happen in some way. But it, it is intended to be member generated and member uh, led eventually. Um, so, and then uh, there's a coffee clutch once a month, uh, you know, Monday morning coffee clutch and stuff. So there are a variety of things happening. I hope you'll pay attention to us and uh, sign on to us too, as well as the senior center. And, you know, really any feedback you have from uh, for us, we wanna hear. And we wanna be able to support the senior center and we wanna be able to, you know, partner on things and, uh, and, and any ideas you have to support that, please do let me know. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. Excellent, thank you. Uh, so, uh, Chad, you said yes, you do, and I wasn't sure, yes, you yeah. do. What well, would you, you know, I don't see the Senior Center or Amherst Neighbors uh, doing any transportation nights, weekends, right. or holidays. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And yeah. we have full lives, just because yeah. we're yes. over 55 doesn't yeah. mean a full life. Thank so you. in my Gray Panther kind of um, uh, continuation, I could say that both those organizations could join together and contract with somebody like Lyft or Uber mm. with a certain amount of lives or transportation or however you want to call it per week, month or year to provide that service. Uh, the two organizations together could really have some some pull. Yes, yes. Mm. Thank yes. you. That's a very yes. nice idea. I think it's a real gift to have both organizations and and they're working together because it means expanding the kinds of services that and 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 the number of or or amount of services that can be provided to the community because elders make a difference in this community too. Mm -hmm. Elders make a difference in this community too. Sure. That's our philosophy. Yes. Oh, can I do a little plug? I'm sorry, I forgot something. I don't know if any of you saw it. I had a letter to the editor yesterday in the yes. Gazette. And I don't know if you saw the backstory in that, which was about two weeks ago, there was an article which I had written and um, it was you know printed in the Gazette. But here's the 
the the wonder. I wrote that article over two years ago. Hmm. And I, it was printed at the time. It was on reframing aging. And the reason I brought that up is because it's in the spirit of the philosophy. It's about the philosophy that older adults have plenty to contribute to the community. Yes. And what we're about is harnessing those resources and bringing them forward. Yes. And um, so that's what the article was about. But in it, you know, I did, obviously I was promoting Amherst Neighbors and we hadn't set up, we weren't up and running yet. So the article said, we're in the planning stage. <laughs> and I have no idea who submitted and said, reprint it, but there it was. And so, you know, I won't go into all the details, but I had, you know, <laughs> communication with the editors about, I don't know how this happened, but thank you very much. And I'll uh, write a letter to the editor is, you know, with a correction kind of essentially and uh, an update on where we are. So that was a letter that was published yesterday uh, in terms of where we are now. So hope you take a look at it and the, <laughs> And thanks, Linda, and thanks for jumping in. And I want to remind everybody that, of course, there aren't many of us left here, but um, to join Amherst Neighbors is there is no membership fee, right. and there's every advantage, and yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. You get their newsletter regularly, and it's just a, a wonderful organization. Thank so, you. Um, Amher AmherstNeighbors.org. <laughs> Very good, exactly. <laughs> okay. And um, I was going to remind people of the Living with Hearing Loss class on Wednesday, April 20th from one to two. And you do have to call the Senior Center if you want to join that group. It's 259-3060. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then lastly is the open house. And unless anybody has other comments, um we will meet again oh we didn't do the minutes <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I don't know if we still have a quorum left uh, question of all uh chat is here one two three four Ooh. we need one more don't christina we? no we have five, five. Yeah. we have five yes. yeah okay so um, if you all had a chance to read the minutes, if you have nothing further to add or correct, um, I'd like a motion to accept the minutes. So move. Dennis Vandal. And a second. Yeah, I second. second. Okay, thanks. And all in favor of the minutes as written. Please raise Aye. your hand. Aye. Aye. Okay. And I. Okay, thank you. Minutes stand approved. And uh, we will meet again on um, May 12th, the day after the open house. <laughs> so we'll get a resounding review of how that all went. And uh, meeting. I hope everybody has a good weekend. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. you as well. Nice Everybody. meeting you all. We're adjourning you as well. Bye bye. bye. Goodbye.